Hey guys, welcome to our video. I hope you saw the previous clip to understand the relationship between the unit circle and the sine curve because in this video we will look into the specific properties of the function. To start off, I just want to lay out properties that we need to cover. So we should be aware of our domain, range, period, cycle, x and y intercepts, max and our maximum and minimum. So let's begin with our domain. So the domain of any function is a set of all possible input values that allows the function to exist. And in other words, it's our set of acceptable x values. With the sine function, our graph can possibly continue on forever, and we know that there's no end with this function. So in that case, we can just simply state our domain to be negative infinity to infinity. As for our range now, we need to look at our output values or our y values. And in that case, we know that our highest y value is 1, and our lowest y value is negative 1. So in that case, now, we can state our range to exist between negative 1 and 1. Now our period. This is the amount of time it takes one of our cycles to complete. On our graph, we know that our initial cycle begins off at zero. And this cycle goes till two pi. Okay, so our cycle goes from zero to two pi. That's that's one complete cycle. And the amount of time that it takes from for it to go to zero to two pi is 2 pi. Okay? Now looking at our x and y intercepts. We're going to quickly look at our y intercepts before the x because it's a little bit easier. So we know what intercept. Um, basically it is where the point where the function passes our x and y axis. So with our y intercept, our function, we know it passes only through y equals to 0. So we're going to state that as our y intercept. So y equals to 0. As for our x-intercept, we know that it, it exists at 0, pi, 2 pi, and looking at the other side, negative pi, and negative 2 pi. So we generally indicate this pattern as noting down as n pi, because as we can see, whatever num number n equals to, that's the number uh, that we would have our x-intercept to be. So if n was to equal to 0, here, our x-intercept is here, and if our n equals to 2, our x-intercept will here. So we can generally indicate that as n pi, where n equals to all real numbers. Now our maximum. We can see on our graph that one of our maximum exists at negative 3 pi over 2. So that's at 1, our highest point. And our next one exists at pi over 2. The distance between these two maximums are, sorry, the distance between these two maximum is 2 pi. Okay, and this falls for all the maximums that we will encounter with the sine function. So we can generally write this statement down as pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Again, where n is all real numbers. And same way goes for our relative minimums. So looking at our minimums now, one of our minimums exists at negative pi over 2. And the other one exists at 3 pi over 2. So we're going to use this value to write our general statement, in which we can just simply write 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. So these are the properties of the sine function, and in class we will also look at the intervals of increase and decrease of the sine function with better explanation. Thank you for listening to this video.